I hear I'm still young and so I can live for another 40 or 50 years. Father said, uh, the true parent said, does God guarantee anyone a long life span? Spend? Imagine that you knew you would die within a year. You have to prepare for your passing in a very, very short period of time. With this kind of a newfound urgency, you might actually be happy. After all, you would be able to prepare for death in a less time. The less time you used to prepare for the death, the less time you will waste in your life. And if you prepare very well, you will build a home for your eternal life. Anyone who lives a, you know, terminally ill life will feel that each hour is so precious. Each day is so precious. And each and every person they deal with will feel precious. So we should always think that we live a short, time-limited life. If you meet someone today, you have to live with the thought that it is the last meeting that you will ever have with uh, the person. Then you can live uh, without, you know, uh, prejudice when dealing with the people. And it is said that everyone should be treated with respect and a uh, generous heart. You know, uh, when I traveling somewhere, especially 50 state tour, and then God really teach me and uh, you know something that you when you see this guy, you maybe you never meet again. Especially those who are senior guy and very old guy and see maybe this one is really for your last meeting with him. So please hug him, embrace him on behalf of me. Please appreciate him, what he has done for the sake of the God's will. So when I visit to in each place, I have this kind of the, how to say, or like a terminally in life, kind of a time limited life, you know? Uh, this kind of mind, if you have that kind of mindset, each person so precious, I don't want to waste my time, right? That's why I think what Father talking about, we need to have this kind of mindset then each one of us are so precious. My time is just so precious. Doesn't have uh, you know time to do some you know, useless things. We really we need to really think about this kind of way. Next, God's love. If you live life, how can we end our our lives beautifully? It is by struggling to save even one more life until the last moment you breathe. This is because God invests everything in order to save each life. Therefore, the most beautiful life is to die while witnessing until the last moment. Does not care about you, how old you are. You know? Father said here, the most beautiful life is what? To die while witnessing until the last moment. How much are you struggling to save even one more life until the last moment you breathe? This is the beautiful life, can be beautiful life. How can we create our life most beautiful life? How much are you struggling to save even one more life until the more the, the last moment you breathe? And then God will surrender. Yeah, you are a man of true love. You have the same concept of me. You really try your best to save even one more life. Thank you, my son. Thank you, my daughter. That's why witnessing is the most beautiful one. That's why I'm so inspired some of the members in the district, you know, uh, two, uh, uh, sub-region two, 
and Japanese lady, you know, they are quite old, 70 plus, near 80 years old, still go to the campus and witnessing. Wow, this one is really moved me so much. My brothers and sisters, you know, one of the most beautiful legacy to our descendant show that kind of lifestyle, struggling to save even one more life until the last moment you breathe. And much you do all your best to save even one more person's life. What if I told you that you had to die tonight? What legacy would you, uh, would you leave behind? What gift of love will you prepare when you go to the heaven? The greatest gift is what? The greatest gift is a performance of love. How much did you save people's life? The track record of love is how many lives is saved. If you witness a lot, eventually you will become a rich and love, with love. This is the gift that heaven will be most proud of. Nothing else, actually. What's the track of the record of love? How many lives it, it saved. There's nothing else to worry about the shorter we expect our physical life to be. The more value we will find in a uh, file, uh, uh, file uh, the will you, you we, uh, we will find in it. We can ask ourselves, how much do I love others? How much do I love my family and do I love my clan? What does it mean to love others? To love my family, to love my clan and my tribe, to love the world, my brothers and sisters. Today, true parents' guidance is so beautiful and the track record of love is what? How many lives is saved? This is the point. Let's study EDP. Nor will the cross of all human beings. Because of such collective responsibility, the cross that your parents bear is your cross. The cross that your elder brother bears is the cross of your younger brother. The cross that your younger brother bears is the cross of your parents and your elder brother. Therefore, today, we should unite and keep in step with each other and act together so we can identify all at once. How can we establish the entire indemnity conditions this is the mission that we have to accomplish today. Yeah. When, once again, when will our collective responsibility end until all mankind is liberated and hell is completely liberated? Our collective responsibility for the cross will remain. It is said that God as a parent has a sense of a collective responsibility and, uh, and the heart to liberate of all mankind as his children. From that point of view, we also need to know that all human beings have a joint responsibility as brothers and sisters who share God's lineage. The stronger the collective responsibility is, the more we must live for the sake of others. You can never live only for self-salvation and your family. In this way, if we all share God's lineage and live with the collective responsibility of being brothers and sisters, we will feel the other person's sin as our sins and our ancestors' sins as our sins. And rather than having a heart of the judgment for their sin and faults, we must have the heart of infinite compassion and tears. Therefore, we must have the strong sense of a collective consciousness as one family, one God. Do you know, my brothers and sisters, how can I have 
that how the infinite compassion and tears all the time. When you truly feel collective responsibility, you know, everything relate to me directly. Not just only heavenly realm, not just only true parents, each one of the old mankind, they are children of God. This special Buddhist family, we share God's blood lineage. We are the same heavenly parents, same true parents. We are the same blood lineage. We have the same blood lineage. That's why anyone having some problem, then that problem is my own problem. We need to have that kind of collective heart, collective sense, collective responsibility. Then truly anyone comes in having a problem and then treat it as my own issue, my own problem. And automatically you can feel the compassion and the shed tears. The spirit who have come so far and all mankind remaining owners are connect, connected collectively with God and me. Just as our, 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 all our nerves uh, focus on one part of our body when it hurts, all human beings, including the spiritual world, are connected collectively in this way. It cannot be separate even if we try. This kind of a mindset is very important, my, my brothers and sisters. Knowing this, we shouldn't pull around any more the collective responsibility that each one of us has to take. We must end it during our lifetime. When we cannot reduce the time to do it, it will remain as a historical cross, the practical cross and the future cross. That's why I really understand mother's side. I want to finish everything within my own generation. I not delay anymore. Our heavenly parents cannot suffer anymore. And mother really understand that kind of, mother have that kind of collective sense, collective responsibility, collective heart to liberate God, to console God, to save all mankind as a mother position, as a position of the Messiah, that kind of collective responsibility. Each one of our unification church members have that kind of collective responsibility. And we can treat all mankind as a, my real brothers and sisters, as a, my real uh, the, the family members then your heart becomes more bigger, like a God. Therefore, when one of you make a mistake, the cross that God has to bear for you will remain until you and your family, your tribe, your race, and entire human race, and everything relate with each one of you, uh, you each one of you suffer. Because of such a collective responsibility, the cross that your parents bear is your cross. The cross that your elder brother bear is the cross of your younger brother. The cross that your younger brother uh, bear is the cross of your parents and your elder brother. I really admire our two parents this kind of guidance. Recently, I'm so inspired with the concept of, of the collectivity. Call a collective responsibility. And then not just only about the, my own individual salvation, not just only my own family salvation, but also need to think my tribe, my nation, and all mankind, you know, our ancestors. As a dual characteristics, as you know, right? Men are born on this earth as the substance of God's masculine internal character, and women are born as the substance of God's feminine internal character, right? Therefore, when a man and woman who resemble God's dual characteristics become one, they will appear as a substantial God in the flesh. In the sense, a woman's God is a man, and all men or uh, man's God is a woman. The place where man and a woman become one is the place where 
God's dual characteristics come together in a substantial physical body. Therefore, there is no way to meet God unless the husband and wife become meet each other and become a couple. A couple has a collective responsibility to realize God's love. Before receiving the blessing, they had the era of the obedience toward their parents and the era of the faith. After, create, um, after creating a family, the husband and wife enter the age of love where they serve each other on behalf of God. Therefore, pleasing the, the husband is pleasing God and pleasing the wife is pleasing God. You no longer have to look here elsewhere for God. Wow, really, thank God. Christianity can teach in this way. Wow, so proud of the guidance. really, really amazing. Really amazing. That's why no need to, no need to look for God anymore, okay? Who is a substantial and really visible God in your spouse? How powerful guidance. Because it is a place where God's purpose of creation is realized. God's purpose of creation is not fulfilled at work, at school, or uh, in the outer environment. The family is the place where God's four great realms of heart and three great kings take place. Our family is the place where God's will is fulfilled. Therefore, our family is the temple where every member should always be closest to each other, honor each other, and serve each other as if they were serving God. What kind of position is the blessing? Is it a complete you know, elimination of the self-centered life that had been centered on Satan until this day, and enter into the era of absolute love and complete denial of self-centeredness. My brothers and sisters, this from now on, I'm telling you very important, but maybe new concept. The realm of absolute love is, the realm of absolute love is a place where the existence of self completely disappears and only the taste of the love is produced. Just as salt dissolves in water, right? And then only gives, uh, gives off a uh, salty taste, right? So in a family, there's no husband, no wife, no parents, no children, and only love remains. Just as a salt dissolves in water and produces only salty water, therefore, we must only serve each other, and the existence of self must disappear. Only then can a family be harmonious, and a family where only true love exists. That's why true love is the really center. Everybody existing for the sake of the true love. Okay, beyond the concept of the husband and wife and parents and children and grandparents. Beautiful guidance. Of receiving the blessing and entering the age of love is the position where only love exists beyond any rituals, systems, beliefs, and the words of the Bible. In other words, it is a place where only love exists beyond the concepts of parents, spouses, siblings, and children. Therefore, all you have to do is absolutely love and serve each other. There is only absolute faith, absolute love, absolute obedience, and absolute service to the other person. It is a place where the existence of self completely disappears, and one exists only for the sake of the other person. Therefore, after the blessing, the concept of I must never exist. Even after the blessing, if you have the concept of goes through the age of the formation, the age of obedience. Next goes through the age of the growth, the age of faith. Next comes to the age of completion, 
receiving blessing and entering the age of love. This is a place where all rituals, systems, beliefs, and the words of the Bible pass away and only love does exist. It is a place where only love exists beyond the concept of the parents, spouses, siblings, and children. Therefore, all you have to do is absolute, absolutely love and serve each other. That's only absolute faith and absolute love, absolute obedience and absolute service to the other person. It is a place where existence of self completely disappears, like a house salt dissolves in water. And one exists only for the sake of the, the other person. Can you assert yourself in a family like this? Isn't there anything else that's better in the family besides existing for the sake of each other, helping each other, forgiving each other, and serving each other? Is there anything else besides this? If there is a person who asserts himself in the family, that person will be ruined and the family will be ruined. Wow, my brother senses the, the realm of the absolute love. It is really incredible, right? Today I talk about the meaning of the blessing and the era of love. Thank you.